Hello again, everybody. Uh, so today I actually wanted to make a little bit shorter of a lesson. My lessons are getting quite long. Sometimes that's what's necessary to get an idea out. But I want to introduce everybody to this idea of mini patterns. Some people first learn these ideas when they start exploring hexatonic scales. At least this was the idea that actually brought it to my attention. When we get to the diatonic portion of this lesson, that hexatonic thing will make more sense. But I figure that for now, we should just stick to pentatonic scales and learn those first and then we can stack our diatonic ideas onto this framework. So to begin there are five mini patterns in the pentatonic scale. There will be seven mini patterns in the diatonic scale. It makes sense it relates to how many notes there are in the scale. In a mini pattern there is always one less note than there is in the entirety of the scale. So for example, if a pentatonic scale has five notes, there will be four notes per mini pattern. If a diatonic scale has seven notes, there will be six notes per mini pattern. So your first mini pattern in C here, we're gonna do C major. This pattern right here, I would call C major. It is the starting of us doing a full C major pentatonic scale, but we're not gonna do that right now. Okay, so this is our major. Okay, I'm gonna take that away and come over here. Now this is still this, using the same notes. We've got our minor mini pattern. If I keep going backwards, I would have our Scottish mini pattern because it's the start of our Scottish pentatonic scale. Okay, and if I kept going back, I'd have blues minor mini pattern right there. It's the start of our blues minor shape. So now let's keep going the other way. Scottish minor major. Now we get to suspended. Notice that suspended mini pattern and the Scottish mini pattern look exactly the same. This can cause some problems that could make it a little bit more difficult to, to notice them out of there. And if I kept going, I'd be back at blues minor, a 12th fret where I was up here, okay? So let me put them all in. Okay, so here it is completely filled in. The colors mean nothing other than just trying to separate mini patterns for you. So here we can see our typical minor pentatonic starting and our major pentatonic starting. And then we see our suspended, our blues minor, and our Scottish. With other students before, I've called these small gap, big gap, small gap, but I feel like I need a way to differentiate the two small gaps. So you have a sus and a scot. Now let's see this in another way. Okay, so if we see here, I've labeled just the root notes in this particular one. We're thinking G minor here because we're on G and we're thinking of the minor shape there. But now what can we do with this knowledge? This seems pretty simple, but here's the part where if you've never seen this, this could blow your mind. If I take a copy of the same thing and I'll just drag it up to where my root note, the red, remember, is up an octave and I'll set it on there and now you're back to having the same exact pattern. We're actually building the entire pentatonic scale out of this. This is the correct things. If we see we just we just started to fill out our major pentatonic here. We started to fill out our minor pentatonic just the same. Okay, and again, moving the root. Now this time the octave is not two frets away, but is three frets away, right? So now we'll set that there. Now we can see that if I keep going all the way down, you've actually got a, a pattern on two strings and it repeats on the next two strings, one whole step down, and then it repeats again on the next two strings, three frets down. And if I really wanted to be accurate, I'd put this right here, just so we can fill out this space of our fretboard as well. Do the same thing over here. There we go. And so that would be the entire thing filled out. We see how our minor pattern is. We got our Scottish pattern, major, suspended, blues minor. Okay, and now, now to do our diatonic scale patterns. All we need to do now is fill in what's missing, which is seven and four from all of these, right? And we'll get them. So four and seven, Four and seven, you just gotta find the places where those happen. Four and seven, seven and four, yeah. And now you've got the entire top line. But before we look at this, I wanna look at each pattern separately. So let's step back. Okay, so this pattern right here, we would think of as Ionian. 
the first six notes of Ionian, or the first six notes of Mixolydian. I hate to start on a confusing one, but unfortunately that's just the way it works out. The difference between Ionian, right, Ionian would have a natural seven, Mixolydian would have a flat seven, but because we're not playing the seven at all, we end up with the first six notes of Ionian or Mixolydian, but we're thinking of this as Ionian right now. We're in C, okay? If I were to, if I wanted to continue moving this on up, I could actually play, I could go to my one right here an octave up, two frets away, play the exact same pattern, right? And then I could go to my octave up three frets away, play the exact same pattern. And that's a quick way of making what's called a hexatonic scale, a six note scale. This was why this idea was first shown to me through the learning of hexatonic scales. Because I started to see, oh man, all the strings are just two string groups that repeat themselves. Now getting, getting rid of that, let's look at our next ones. This would be the Dorian pattern the first six notes of Dorian. This would be the Phrygian pattern, or the first six notes of Phrygian. This would be the Lydian pattern, the first six notes of Lydian. Now we're at the first six notes of Mixolydian. Notice that it looks just like the Ionian pattern, so this one does happen twice. Now this would be the first six notes of Aeolian. Lastly, the first six notes of Locrian. And if we were to take seven and three away, let's, let's put this over here just so we can see. So here we have the same thing mirrored, just so you can see that I'm just moving it an octave down for us. But if I take away these two and put these two in, we're back to Ionian where we started again. So those are the seven mini patterns of the diatonic. Now let me quickly build them all so we can see. Add it in Dorian, add it in Phrygian, add it in Lydian, add it in Mixolydian, add it in Aeolian, and Locrian again. Okay, now going backwards, we got Locrian, we got Aeolian, we got Mixolydian. Now the weird one with the stagger, we got Lydian. And then we got Phrygian, and that's actually where the string ends on E, E, e Phrygian in the key of C. So now checking out the same kind of thing going on here. This time we are back again to G minor or B flat major. We've moved our key, but that really matters not. The main point of this is that we see how they move down in a sort of diagonal fashion. Let's move our next diagonal here. So this one, remember, goes up two frets. That's the octave there. Cool. And then to do the same thing again, we go up, but this time not two frets, but three frets. And now there's the, there's the pattern starting to be revealed. We still need to fill out this area, but that's just because of the photo editor that I'm working in. And so there we can see the entire diatonic scale filled out again. So just to showcase a couple others, here's another example of using the minor mini pattern and going up with it, that's A minor. Here's another classic lick you see used with the minor pentatonic, but as we realize now, we're actually starting with the Scottish shape and then working our way up from there. But So people will play this, they'll slide and then play the next, slide and then play the next. You end up in the House of Blues down here. Here's one we already saw, which was just the Ionian pattern. Yet again, another visual of that. And then here is another way you can actually use these two, which is arpeggios. If you can make a two-string arpeggio, so you know where one, three, and five are, you would normally go down here for seven, I would think, if you're going in order, but you just have to transpose that seven down here so that now you have a two-string shape, and then you can use any two-string shape. Notice this isn't one of the mini patterns of either of the scales. Notice that this is a completely new mini pattern to us, but you can make up your own mini pattern and then just follow the octave rule all the way up to find it, and now you've just essentially scalified it. Yeah, and that's basically it. I hope this concept was helpful. I hope that there were a couple light bulbs there and you can uh, now move up octaves and down octaves much quicker.